So I have to know something about your pain and your pleasure with regard to my payoff. Because if I don't know what your pain is, then I can't move you away from that pain. If I don't know what your pain is, I can't attach your current method to that pain. If I don't know what your pleasure is, then I don't have anything to move you towards. So I got to move you away from your pain towards your pleasure. And I've got to show you how my offer is the best chance you have of getting from here to there. This is going to be amazing. You got a lot of people on this call today. I think the biggest miss that people make in terms of so selling it. And that's what a good marketing message, good it's branding about does. How does somebody do something big in a very short period of time? Without further ado, I'm going to introduce someone much smarter than me about uh, presenting from and communicating your message on stage. So uh, Myron Golden, if he could unmute, I'm super excited to introduce. He is literally the preeminent trainer when it comes to how to sell high ticket, how to command any stage. So Myron, thank you for taking the time. Absolutely. My pleasure to be here. How are you, man? Oh man, I'm doing great. And I'm excited to take notes myself. That's what's up, Bill. That's what's up. So the, the first thing that I, I, obviously you are the leader at this is I want to dive into how to sell high ticket, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of our audience is selling high ticket, right? Mm -hmm. And then I want to also transition into in the new world that we're in, Mm -hmm. um, how can people take the tried and true principles of, you know, communicating via a stage and actually take that online? But let's start with what are the principles and maybe some of the mistakes when it comes to selling high ticket? Well, I think the biggest mistake when it comes to selling high ticket is thinking that selling high ticket is just selling high ticket. Selling high ticket is really selling high value results, right? So you have to sell somebody a high value solution, a big payoff. I think one of the, like when I watch people present, it's so fascinating to me that people think that the value of the offer is something other than what the value actually is. And what I mean by that is you'll have somebody, they'll be, they'll start presenting and then they'll start telling you about how many videos and how many books and how many workbooks and how many audios. And they, that's because they think the value of the, uh, the their offer is their, is their pieces, right? But the pieces that make up your offer are not the value of your offer. The value of your offer is not based on your pieces. Um, uh, the biggest mistake I see people make is while they're attempting to sell their offer, they try to teach the process, right? And the process, your process is not your offer. In fact, one of the surefire, way, surefire ways to get people not to take advantage of your offer is to show them the process before they buy the offer. If you show them what the process is, well, you're going to get you're going to get all of these slack boards and you're going to get these Trello boards and you're going to get this, that and the other thing. And you're going to get these spreadsheets and you start showing them all the process they have to go through. When you when you show them the process, they immediately think, wow, this is going to be hard. Right. And when people are buying from you, they basically have three questions in their mind. Number one, um, will this work, right? Number two, um, is this true? And number three, will it work for me? Can I do it? And so if, if they think it's hard, they're not gonna, they're not gonna buy it. Okay, so, so the process, they, and then the other mistake that people make, they think that, the, they think that the value of their offer is their person. And so what they'll do is they'll start auctioning off hours of their time. Well, you get so many hours of my time, you get so many meetings with me. So because the person who is selling the offer has a lot of time and effort and energy and maybe even money invested into learning the things that they know, they think, well, the other person is going to value my time because I'm the expert. Well, I mean, I'm an expert, but my time, you don't care anything about my, how many hours of my time you get. You only care about one thing when you are selling. And the one thing that you care about, whether you know it or not, the only thing you care about, you don't care about any of this stuff. The only thing you care about is what is the payoff? And so when you're selling, all of your emphasis needs to be, all of your emphasis when in your offer needs to be on the payoff for them. The payoff can't be what I think is the payoff. If I'm selling to you, the payoff has to be what you think is the payoff. So I have to know something about your pain and your pleasure with regard to my payoff. Because if I don't know what your pain is, then I can't move you away from that pain. If I don't know what your pain is, I can't attach your current method to that pain. If I don't know what your pleasure is, then I don't have anything to move you towards. 
So I got to move you away from your pain towards your pleasure. And I've got to show you how my offer is the best chance you have of getting from here to there. Does that make sense? I took a half page of notes already. <laughs> you're, Unbelievable. You're funny. That's, that's funny. So pieces, so. process, person, payoff. And it seems to me like you want to focus the majority of your efforts in any virtual or physical communication around the payoff, right? All, all of your, all of your, the attention, all of everything that you say to a person in your marketing and in your sales has to point to the payoff that they believe is more valuable than the money they've exchanged. If I say to you, hey, Bill, you give me a dollar, I give you a dollar. So let's go ahead and play that game, okay? So, so this is me. This is Bill. So I say, Bill, give me a dollar. So you get one dollar, and I give you a dollar. So you give me a dollar, I give you a dollar. How much do you have before that exchange? Zero. Bro. No, you have a you have a dollar. Right before that exchange, you have a dollar and I have a dollar. Oh, okay. Right? Yes, yes. I got it. Yep. We both have a dollar, right? Yep. Right. So if we trade and you give me your dollar and I give you my dollar, now how much do you have? Uh, one dollar. You have a dollar. How much do I have? A dollar. A dollar. So don't make the mistake of thinking that people are going to pay you because the thing that you're selling them is as valuable as the thing they're buying, as the money they're paying. People don't pay you because it's worth the money. People will only pay you when it's worth more than the money. So if I say you pay me a dollar and I'll pay you $10, now is that a good deal for you? Oh, yeah. That's a great deal for you because I'm showing you how to 10x. This payoff is 10 times greater than the payout, right? But what if you say, okay, well, I'll give you $10. You give me $10, I'll give you $100. Is that a good deal for you? Yeah, it's a great deal for you. Right. So you're still worth taking. If you say, OK, you, you pay me one hundred dollars and I'll pay you a thousand. Still a great deal. Right. And it doesn't matter. You pay me a thousand. I pay you ten thousand. You pay me ten thousand. I pay you one hundred thousand. See, if I can give you a 10x payoff for your payout, then you're then it's an easy yes for you. But it's only an easy yes for you. Not only if I can give you a 10x payoff, but if I can show you. If I can describe to you, if I can tell you that, number one, that I'm going to give you a 10x payoff, and then how I'm going to give you a 10x payoff, then and only then are you willing to pay me whatever the amount of money is. See, if you understand this, like, do this with me, Bill. Do this. Re hold your hands out a little wider and repeat after me. When the value is this big. When the value is this big. And the price is this big. And the price is this big. They always buy. They always buy. And so the problem is most people, when they are selling, they, they, they've got this much value, but, and, they've got, and the price is this big, but they're not showing the person that the value is that much bigger than the payout. And so what they end up doing is they end up lowering the price and lowering the price and lowering the price because they think the price is the problem. The price is never the problem. You haven't uncovered enough value. You have not, you either do not have a 10x value, or you've not shown them that you have a 10x value. So it's not just, it's not just the, the, the intrinsic real 10x value, but it's also the perceived proclaimed 10x value. Like yeah, having the value is not enough. You have to be able to put it in language that causes them to feel that it's worth 10 times what they're paying. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, so question on that. And it's actually two questions. So what, do you think more people have a problem with the actual intrinsic value not being 10 times what they ask? Or do you think it's more of a communication? I, I think uh, it's both. I think, I think, I think it's both. I think, I, I think, I think there are more people who actually can produce a result that can't describe it than there are people who can describe a result that can't produce it. Uh, it I think they both exist, but I think there's a much bigger problem with people who actually have it, the ability to produce a result for somebody not being able to describe it than there is like people who don't think they can produce a result for somebody are not trying to sell it anyway most of the time. Now, there are a handful of people who, you know, gone into an industry, read three books, and they think they're, you know, God's gift to that industry. Well, that's rare. That's not that's that's rare more than it's like the norm. But it's very, very common for people who have the ability to produce a result for people, not understanding that the value of their, the value of their offer is the payoff. And so they spend all their time emphasizing the pieces, the process, and their person. 
And so they never really reveal to the person they're selling to exactly what uh, the value of their offer is because they don't know. See, if I don't know the value of my offer, then I can't explain it to you. And see, when I'm explaining it to you, like when I'm telling you, when I'm revealing the value of my offer, right? I'm describing it, right? So I have to put it in language. It has to be number one, it has to be uh, measurable. So if you don't, if you can't, well, I teach people how to feel better. You can't measure feeling better. I teach people how to have more energy. That's not measurable, right? So um, it has to be measurable. Okay, if you find yourself having to take a nap six times a day, I'm going to show you how to have enough energy that you want. You can stay up for two days and still won't need a nap. That's measurable, right? So it has to be measurable. Number two, it has to be statable. You have to be able to say it in a sentence, right? If you have to, if you have to use too many words, if if you have to be extremely verbose to get your point across, then you are not clear. I love what Einstein said. He didn't say this exact, it's not the exact quote, but it means the same thing. He said, if I can't explain a concept to an intelligent 12-year-old, I don't understand it, mm. right? So it has to be statable. You have to be able to like say it in a sentence. This is what I can do for you. People say, Myron, what do you do? Well, I teach people how to scale their business by selling high volume, high ticket, and predominantly high volume, high ticket from the stage. And my students have six, multiple six, seven, and it's multiple seven figure days faster than any other business coach in the industry. Now you know what I do. Why? Because I gave you a way to measure it. And then I put it in a sentence. I stated it. It has to be measurable. It has to be statable. Then number three, it has to be understandable. So people make the most understandable. People make the mistake of thinking that because I said it, that means they learned it, Right. But just because you said it doesn't mean they learned it. You have to say it in language they understand. The, like, the, the, when I coach people, and I coach a lot of people, one of the things I've discovered is the more education, the more traditional education a person has, the less coachable they are and the harder it is for them to learn. Wow. So one of the things that you want to do if you want to be really, really powerfully persuasive, you have to learn to speak in third grade language. Third to fifth grade language, but third grade language converts sales. So if, if you explained it to a third grader and they don't understand it, then you probably didn't do a good job describing it. Um, it like I could say, well, what you've got to do is make sure uh, not to promulgate your esoteric cogitations and articulate your superficial sentimentalities with amicable and philosophical and psychological observations to be aware of platitudes and ponderosities, and make sure you let your extemporaneous verbal evaporations demonstrate a clarified conciseness and a compact comprehensibleness with no previous garrulity or jejune bafflement. Well, I may understand what that means, but if you don't understand what that means, it's not going to do you any good. And all I said was say what you mean and don't use big words, right? But why didn't I just say that? Yeah. And so, so many uh, people want to impress people with how smart they are that they leave no impact. So it's the concept and, and, and I've never, I mean, wow, that is unbelievable. Feature advantage benefit, right? And when you're an expert and you're talking about how the more educated you are about something, the more likely you're going to be to kind of brain dump about your expertise. That's all feature, 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 feature. If you sign up with me, you're going to get hard work, da, 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 and, and we're going to right. file this and do that at this time. And, that, and that's all features yeah. and advantages is how that measures up against other solutions. And then the benefit is ultimately what the, what the client yeah. gets in return. So and I think there's a fear around this, Myron. There's a fear that if I don't wow them enough with my technical knowledge, I won't make the sale. Yeah, people don't want to be wild with your technical knowledge. They want to be wild with the result they can't get without you, period. That's the only thing that's going to really wow them. And so when you think about features and benefits, think of it like this. In, in, in the simplest terms, think of it like this. A feature is what it has. My product has this, it has that, it has this, it has that, or it's what I have. That's what a feature is. A benefit is what you get because of what it has. And so when I'm talking to you, if I can't say you get this and you get this and you get this and all of those thises are results, I'm talking to you about the wrong thing. I'm talking to you about something you don't care anything about. Mm. So, so it has to be measurable. It has to be statable. It has to be understandable. And lastly, it has to be desirable. <laughs> That's a big one. <laughs> right? If they don't desire it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that you can, that you can measure it and you can state it and you can understand it if they don't desire it. You may be able to teach people how to go from where they are right now to be able to a concert violinist in a year. 
And you may be able to say that and they may be able to understand it, but they have no desire to be a concert buying audience. They're not buying from you. Yeah. So it has to be desirable. It has to be something they desire to, a result they desire to have, not just as a result you desire for them to have. 